Welcome to the Statistic NED YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about R's internal data formats, namely .rda, .rdata and .rds. And I'm really keen to hear if you knew all this that I'm mentioning here or if there's anything new to you um, if you've worked with R before. So, the key points I want to talk about. Um, we'll start out with the .rda and .rdata formats and take a look at them. And then we'll talk a little bit about how how .rds is different, and spoiler alert, I'll show you why I nowadays prefer the .rds format over .rda and .rdata. When I started out with using R, um, the first format I used was .rda. And lastly, we'll compare file sizes of these internal file formats to CSV files. Right, let's dive right in. Um, the data I'm using today is the Diamonds dataset, which ships with ggplot2. So for the sake of the presentation, it's a sharing in file format. Um, it's a nice use case for a Plotly diagram. So you can see we get these nice mouse over formats. I don't want to go into too many details of um, this data set. We have diamonds and different cuts of diamonds. It's a little bit over 50,000 rows of data, so it's not big data in the gigabyte sense, but it's not too trivial like empty cars, for example. And note that I'm using here the widget frame package to create a frame widget that's only for the sake of this presentation, because in this sharing and format, um, without this trick, the mouse over effects would be slightly off, so using this gives me accurate mouse over effects to the right bars. Okay, so this is the data set we'll be using, but now we'll just store and load the data. So we start out with the .rda and .rdata formats. Um, and you see the commands are essentially the same. Um, we save the data, specify the object name and the file name, and then I wrote a little custom function to display the file size. So I'm using the file.info function. Uh, it's got a slot for size, and I'm using the utils package to format the result a little bit more nicely. Um, and we see the file sizes are exactly the same. So .rda is basically just a shortcut for our data. But yeah, apart from that, the files are the same. OK. Um, what is special about this .rda and .rdata object type? Um, we can store several objects in one file. For example, here I store the dataset. P was the plot that we created, a ggplotly object, and also this custom function, my file info. I can just add these up and store them in the diamonds.rda file. Then I'm using this infamous line rm list equals ls to um, empty my global environment, and then I load this file back in, and then my environment contains these three objects, diamonds, my file info, and p. So we can use this format to store several objects in one file. That's neat and nice to know. Um, and that also applies to our data files, not only to .rda as shown here. So you might rather know the R data file type uh, without a file name before the dot, maybe, from storing the current workspace. This is exactly what happens interactively when you close down our studio and then you confirm to save the workspace image. So we can also do that programmatically using the save.image function. And then again, as before, I remove all the objects from my global environment and I load this .r data file. This is what our studio does by default. When you start our studio, if you haven't changed the settings, and you see that again we get these three objects back, the diamond data set, my custom function, my file info, and this p object, the plotly diagram. Note that there are good reasons not to rely on the workspace image. I'll give you an example. It's a worst case example. I hope this never happens to you. Um, let's say you work on a data analysis project for six months. On the first day you're excited to get a new data set and you look at it and you see some um, errors in the data set, maybe um, from the data generating process, some huge numbers that are not plausible, and maybe um, maybe a decimal place was was specified in the wrong position or whatever. So um, you just um, correct that manually, interactively in the console, 
Um, and then you keep on working with this data set, and every time you close down our studio, you save the workspace image, and the next day, conveniently, you continue working with this data because the workspace image gets recreated or reopened every time you start up our studio again. So you do that for six months, you get a lot of interesting results, you publish them, and then the project is finished for you, and then your colleague tries to replicate your results, um, and he can't replicate your results, he gets different results because this one recoding step that you did on the very first day was accidentally not part of your script. So this would be a worst case scenario, your results are not reproducible. Um, so the RStudio team recommends to change the setting in RStudio and not automatically save the workspace image as you close down RStudio. So this forces you to always recreate your data by running scripts. Um, and then you make sure that all the necessary data preparation steps are part of your script so that you don't produce errors like the one I just told you about. Okay, so much about the workspace image. Let's move on to the RDS format. There's a fundamental difference between the RDA and .R data formats that we talked about just now and the RDS format, and that is RDS can only store one object. You can't use it to store several objects at once in the same file. So here we can just save the diamonds data again in the .rda and .rds formats, and we see the file sizes are almost exactly the same. There's a little difference, and we'll get a clue what this difference could be. Um, so this is one difference, but um, on the next slide I'll show you the main reason why I now prefer the RDS format. So let's look carefully at what is happening here. Why do I prefer the RDS format over .rda and .rdata? When I first started using R, I started using .rda to store my files, but I wouldn't recommend that anymore. So here's what can go wrong. I create a little data set that I call diamonds. I'm just musing <laughs> which type of diamonds my wife could like. So I have three types of diamonds and an assumption whether my, my wife could like this diamond or not. And then I read in the diamonds data set that I stored before in the RDS format, and I can give it a custom object name um, because read RDS takes an assignment. So I assign it to diamonds underscore ggplot2 to differentiate it to differentiate it from my diamonds data set that I created above. This is not true for the RDA format. Note that the function here is just to load the object. There's no assignment, so I can't specify an object name. And in this case, it goes wrong because the diamonds data set is stored as the object diamonds, and without a warning, it overrides the object in my global environment, my own diamonds data set. So that is lost in this moment, no warning, no safety net, um, and this is really a danger with the RDA format. Um, I've been guilty of inconsistent naming, even being German. I sometimes um, specify German file names, and I had inconsistent object names, different to the file names, like an English object name in my global environment, but a German language file name. And then, especially in these cases, there's no way for the user who runs my function to know in advance what the object name will be. And we also saw that RDA can have several objects, so, so this increases the danger of overwriting objects that you already have in your global environment. So this is really a danger, and RDS avoids this danger by um, forcing the user to specify object names himself. So then you can have more control over what your global environment looks like and which objects you want to keep and which um, you deliberately override. Right, that was it about the RDS format. Um, and now let's just compare file sizes between these R internal file formats and the CSV file format. So here I'm using the data table package and its blazing fast fwrite function to store the diamond data set in the CSV file format. You can do it in base R, but fwrite is considerably faster. Um, and let's just compare file sizes and we see that the CSV file is well over two megabytes and the R internal file formats um, just use less than, uh, um, just use half a megabyte, we could say, about half a megabyte. So this is a huge difference. Note that I didn't touch on the compression parameter. You can specify um, the type of compression in the 
our internal file formats. You can check the documentation if you want to find out more, but there is a default uh, gzip compression, so um, you get considerably smaller file sizes. Um, don't try to remember by which factor the file sizes differ, because this depends on the type of data, like how well it can, compressed, can be compressed, how much you gain by compression. Right, that was basically it for today. I hope you found something useful in this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos. All the best for your own data analysis. See you next time. Ciao.